Okay, rigid body kinetics, right? Or kinematics? Uh, kinetics. Okay. Sorry. What if every word in physics started with kin and ended with x and just had more syllables in the middle? Uh, okay, number four. All right, so yes, we got this T-shaped thing. Uh, do you want me to go through it or, or you have a specific question about it? So, when you were correct, was it harder, like, how to find the moments that you're kind of Okay, yeah. In the masses of the two, like, and we have to come to the next one. Oh, yeah, okay, right. Okay. So, rigid body, kinetics, number four. Um, so we have this T-shaped thing. Um, all the thicknesses are five centimeters. Um, and this is 0.25 meters. Um, and this is 0.15 meters. Um, it has a mass of 10 kilograms, and we want to calculate the mass moment of inertia about two different points. Uh, okay, so you'd be sort of a... The only reason you would do that if, is if uh, those, in turn, like each one is a fixed point for that problem, you know. Otherwise, you'd be calculating the moment of inertia about the center of mass of the thing. Uh, okay, um, let's, so there's a line of symmetry. So we know the moment of inertia is along there somewhere. Uh, I'm going to put my coordinate system here. So I know that the um, I know that the centroid is going to lie along this axis. Um, and let's see. Oh yeah, it was the masses thing. So. Um, uh, it has a mass of 10 kilograms. Okay, so let's uh, break it up into rectangles. I'll call uh, this bottom rectangle one and this top one two. Um, so rectangle one. Uh, has an area of 0 0.05 times 0 0.15, uh, which is uh, one, two, one, 7.5 times 10 to the one, two, minus three um, meters squared. Uh, and the centroid of that is so I'll call this centroid of one is uh, zero for x because it's along that axis of symmetry uh, point oh seven five and then rectangle two Uh, the area is 0 0.05 times 0 0.25. Uh, 
and uh, that is um, 12.5 times 10 to the minus third, I think. Uh, and the centroid location from, uh, well, the x component, the x coordinate of that centroid is zero because it's just along that red dotted line. And then the y position, uh, you have to go up 0.15 to get to the bottom of that rectangle two, and then you have to go up another uh, 0.025 to get to the middle. Um, so 0 0.175. Okay, so now about the masses of the two pieces. Um, you know that the... Um, the ratio of the area of each one to the total area is equal to the mass of each one to the total mass. So uh, 7.5 times 10 to the minus third over, well, what's our A total? Adding those two up. Um, is that 20 times 10 to the minus third, it looks like? Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, 7.5 times 10 to the minus third over 20 times 10 to the minus third is equal to the mass of uh, rectangle one uh, over the total mass, which is 10. And so uh, M1 is 3.75 uh, kilograms. And then you could do the same thing with the other one, or you could just, since you know that they add up to 10, um, so that's 6.25. And then my question about the moment of inertia, mm -hmm. how do you know which uh, like A you're going to use, to use in the A squared or B squared from the center? Oh, for the... Um, so in the formula that that's like um, one twelfth uh, mass times length squared plus width squared, it doesn't matter which you use; it, it's the same either way. And it's the and it's length plus width squared for this one. It's not going to just length squared. Length squared. Right. If you know the width of the rectangle, so the the difference is something that you're calling. You're just saying it's slender versus something where you're using the width. It's always a little, you know, it's more precise to use the width. But just remember that if the width is less than a tenth of the height or vice versa, uh, then the contribution is going to be less than 1% because you're squaring them. Okay. So once you get to an aspect ratio of, ten, of more than 10 to 1, um, it's the width really isn't going to come into it much. Okay, are you with me on that? Any questions about that? Okay. Any other homework questions? Yeah. Okay, number seven. So. Um, So we have this rod, um, and at any position uh, that it's at, this is the theta, and it's changing in time. 
Uh, and it's 1.5 meters long and 15 kilograms. So L equals 1.5 meters. Uh, mass is 15 kilograms. And we're given this function theta. So as time goes, this thing is uh, 0.05 t squared. Okay, so maybe like a motor is making it do that or something. And uh, so we want to calculate first the external couple that's required and uh, second, the acceleration of this point here. Um, okay, so first we want to calculate The external couple, uh, I'll call that um, M of T. And then second, uh, we want to calculate the acceleration of that point P. Uh, well, the angular velocity is a function of time is um, d theta dt, and so that's 0 0.1 t, and alpha as a function of time is uh, d omega dt, and so that's 0 0.1. And this says, so if we're using a coordinate system like this, then these are both z components. Uh, so, so omega as a vector is 0, 0, 0.1t. And alpha as a vector is 0, 0, uh, 0.1. Oh, and um, acceleration. Okay, so we're doing the couple as a function of time, um, but we're doing the uh, we're doing the acceleration at a specific instant at time equals five. Okay, so now um, I'm going to go through the steps for a rigid body. Uh, does this thing have a fixed point? Yes. What does it mean for something to have a fixed point? Uh, what's required for it to be called a fixed point? Uh, like fixed to something else? Fixed to what, you know? It doesn't translate. Compared to what? The coordinates. Yeah. So if it's an inertial coordinate system that's not rotating and stuff, it has to be fixed in that coordinate system. And... Uh, what about velocity versus acceleration? Uh, so I think everyone would agree the velocity of that fixed point has to be zero as time goes by. What about the acceleration? Linear acceleration has to be zero. The, yes, the translational whatever linear acceleration at that point has to be zero. So when we get to stuff that's rolling, you know, a, a, an object that's rolling has a point that has zero velocity at every instant but the acceleration of that point isn't zero. So that's not going to be a fixed point according to these rules. Okay, so we're just talking about joints. Okay, but this one has one. Uh, so it has a fixed point. Um, and so now we have to calculate the mass moment of inertia about that fixed point. Um, you can use the formula for the center.
plus the parallel axis theorem. Um, by the way, that always comes out to be the same thing, one-third times the mass uh, times the length squared. When you're, you know, if it's a fixed point at the end of a rod, it always comes out to be that. Um, and so you get 15 times 1.5 squared. So that's 11.25 kilogram meter squared. Um, and now we'll do a free body diagram. And I'm just going to assume that this angle is theta. Uh, so the forces that we have are a weight force. I don't think it says to ignore that. Yep, X towards the bottom of the page. Uh, so this is 15 times 9.81, so uh, 147.15. Um, and then that joint applies a force with an unknown direction an unknown magnitude. And then we're assuming that that some kind of motor or something applies a couple M. Okay. And so now that's all the loads. I'm going to fill out the table. So row, force, moment. Um, okay, well, the easiest one is the couple. We don't care about rho or the net force for that because it's zero, so I'll just put in M there. And then the reaction force, uh, that's at the about point. So the vector from the about point to where the force is applied is zero. Uh, the force is Rx, Ry, cross product is zero. And then the last one is the weight. Uh, so what's the rho vector depending on theta? Um, well, it's going to be um, the thing has a length of 1.5, so the distance from the pin to the center of mass where the weight is applied is 0.75. So this is 0.75 times cosine and sine of theta. And I guess that's all we can do for that. So 0.75 cosine of theta, 0.75 sine of theta. The force vector is zero, negative 147.15. And so the cross product, this times this minus this times this. So 0.75 times negative 147.15. Um, so we have negative. 110.36 times the cosine of theta. Um, do we need Newton's second law for this one? I'm just walking through the steps. Newton's second law we only use uh, if there's no fixed point. We might use it later, but like on your first pass through like this, you can skip it if there's a fixed point. Uh, and so we're just going to go straight to the moment equation. And so we have negative 110.36 times the cosine of 
theta plus m is equal to um, what am I looking for? Uh, 11.25 alpha, okay? Uh, now, we know what theta and alpha are as functions of time. So we have negative 110.36 times the cosine of 0 0.05 t squared plus m is equal to 11.25 times 0 0.1. And so m is equal to 110.36 times the cosine of 0 0.05 t squared plus 1.125. Okay, so in order, if for some reason you needed this to have an acceleration uh, that follows this pattern, this is the couple your motor would have to apply as time goes by. Okay, and then uh, next it says, uh, what's the acceleration? Um, so this is A. And then second, uh, what's the acceleration of P at time equals five seconds? Um, Well, we know that the acceleration of P comes from the watermelon equation. Um, so, uh, this R vector is 1.5 times the cosine of theta, sine of theta. Um, when time is equal to five seconds, theta is, okay, so, um, Theta is okay. So um, this theta, since we're taking derivatives of it and stuff like that, has to be in radians. So. Um, 0.05 times 5, 0.05 times 5 squared is 1.25. So this is 1.5 times cosine of 1.25, sine of 1.25. And I got a, well, let's see, 1.25 times, so that's like 71.62 degrees, so 1.5 times, uh, Okay, so cosine of this
Okay, so the R vector is 0 0.47, 1.42. Are you with me on that? Um, and the omega vector, we have omega as a function of time, so that's uh, zero zero point five and alpha is constant zero zero point one and so now you can just plug that in uh, and you get whatever you get Any other questions about that one? So remember that just like so these are the things that are always true. Acceleration is the time derivative of the velocity. Velocity is the time derivative of the position. Alpha is the time derivative of omega, okay? And in the plane, if you're doing a 2D motion, um, then omega is the time derivative of, so I guess I'll, take that vector thing off and just put it like this. Things get a little confusing as to what this theta would mean if you're in three dimensions. There's still something like it that works, but you have to be more careful about thinking about it. But in the plane, you don't really have to be think, uh, careful about thinking about it. Omega is, uh, sorry, is the time derivative of this. Uh, alpha is the time derivative of omega. Those are always true. Can you use like spherical coordinates or anything? Um, we will talk briefly about, so spherical and polar and cylindrical coordinates uh, are, so if you think about how the coordinate system works for those. So if you just think of like R and theta, think about polar, R and theta. Uh, that is not an orthogonal coordinate system. Um, so, like, those are not components of a vector, okay? Um, but you can define a coordinate system in, in those that, that is orthogonal, and, you know, the math works for everything that we've done. But think about what it does, that coordinate system does as the object moves around. That coordinate system is rotating, Okay. And so we can't deal with it yet, but we'll be able to derive it and think about it once we start talking about rotating coordinate systems. Okay, so we'll get to that later. Um, okay, any other homework questions? Well, let me just do another example of a rigid body problem. Uh, last time I did um, a rigid body problem where we had a fixed point. This time I'll do one that doesn't have a fixed point, like a thing just flying through space. Um, so let's say that we have an object like, sort of like a boomerang. Um, And I'll say this is five centimeters.
And then the lengths, I'll say, uh, this is 0 0.2 meters, and this is uh, 0 0.25 meters. Um, and let's say that at this instant, uh, this thing is rotating with an angular velocity this way of uh, 20 radians per second. And let's say, so imagine if this is a boomerang spinning like this. Um, it runs into a wall that at the instant of contact applies a force this way of, let's say, 800 newtons. Um, and let's calculate, uh, what should we calculate? How about the acceleration of... Um, this point here. Okay. Um, well, the first thing we have to do is calculate the centroid location. Because, I mean, okay, let me think about it this way. Like, you see this rigid body problem, and so you say, like, okay, I'm going to use the steps for solving a rigid body problem. Uh, there's no fixed point, and so the about point is the center of mass. Okay, so then at that point, okay, now we have to calculate the centroid. Um, and I'm going to put my coordinate system here, I guess. Um, so I'll break it up into two rectangles. I'll call this one one and this one two. Um, the area of one is 0 0.05 times 0.25. And so that is 0 0.0125. Oh, I need a mass, too. Let's say, what's a good mass for a boomerang? Uh, <laughs> that is a good boomerang. Uh, that would really do a number on a kangaroo. <laughs> yeah, it, or it's very thick into the page, maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Okay, so I don't know, point one. Uh, and then the centroid location. Um, that is going to be uh, up point two and up another point oh two five. So 0.225 for y. And then for x, it's going to be negative. Um, so I have this rectangle as the whole length. So negative 0.125 for x. Uh, 
And then for the second rectangle, uh, this is the thickness times 0.2. And so that is 0 0.01. And the centroid location for x is negative 0 0.025. For y is positive 0.1. Um, the total area is the sum of those two, so 0.0225. And so the centroid of this thing is 1 over 0 0.0225 times the quantity 0 0.0125 times negative 0.125 positive 0.225 plus 0 0.01 times the vector negative 0 0.025 positive 0 0.1. If I haven't been recording any of this, that's great. Point oh four times ten to the minus four and so the final moment of inertia of this thing about its center of mass is the sum of these two moments of inertia And so it is 8.01 times 10 to the minus 4 kilogram meters squared. Okay, well, let's stop there and I'll finish this problem on uh, Friday. The tedious stuff is done now. Uh, so now we're going to get into the, you know, the main part of the kinetics on Friday. Okay, that's all.